Hi, I'm Carl Taylor and welcome to visualeducation.com. And today's workshop is about using two lights, or maybe even one light, but a maximum of two. And we're going to stick with basic modifiers, like soft boxes, P70 reflectors, grids, and a few homemade accessories. Many of you are familiar with uh, the lovely Karis because you've done lots of modeling for us, haven't you? She stood in the sea in stormy gales, lied, lay down in ice cold ponds, had a dagger in your hand. You've done loads of stuff with us. So um, nice to be working with Karis again today. I've got an Octobox. It's called an Octobox for obvious reason. Nice big light means good, soft lighting. So at the moment, we've got a white studio with a white wall, a simple chair. So I'm just gonna take this shot. I'm shooting with a 100 mil lens, which is equivalent to about uh, 75, 80 millimeter and 35 mil format. I'm at F11. I'm just going to get Karis to fit in my frame. And we'll take a look at the soft lighting look that that 150 Octobox gives. And um, we can see the fall off of light on the right hand side here going into shadow. So the first thing we can do if we want to fill that light is use a reflector. Right, so if you're in a smaller space with a white wall, then you're going to have a lot of fill light from that single light. Take the shot again. So now you can see in here a lot softer lighting. Now another way you can make this side darker even with a white wall is simply to bring your light closer. Keep going, 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 and a bit more, and a bit more. Yep, okay, hold it about there because I can just start to see the light now. Now take uh, one stop off of that light, please, in power. So if we compare the two shots, so I took one stop off by moving the light in and closer and we've gone from that to that and look at the difference in the background the exposure on the background and the exposure on the right side of the face so if we zoom in on the face i'm just going to zoom back out a tiny bit to there and we compare the two so look at the contrast difference between this shot and that shot and what we see in this first shot that we did that one that's on screen now is what I would call your typical boring looking lighting that most photographers run with because they don't think about how close they should put the softbox. They normally put it at a distance that feels like it gives the model a bit of space or the photographer a bit of space or it just sort of feels right. But actually when you bring your softboxes in uncomfortably close to the model and then adjust the exposure, you get a better result as we have there. So there's the hair light now, which you can see the spotlight on the floor. That's the tight grid. So we're just controlling it with a tight beam. Focusing on Karis, taking the shot. Let's have a look at that hair light. So we have a two light setup, a really simple but beautifully lit portrait, lovely and soft with relatively nice fill light on this side from that simple lighting setup. So the light is harder because the softbox is further away, the fill is greater, um, and you can see how it works much, much more beautiful when that light is really, really soft. Now, if you want to add a little bit more drama, then we don't even need a big 150 Octobox. Let's have the uh, 75 Octobox round here. So we've still got the hair light on the other side. Take a shot. Right, so the exposure is about the same, but you can see how much more high contrast that light is in the face now because of its size. So if we bring that into here, you can see it's a much, much higher contrast light than we had in the previous shot there. Let's just zoom in on those a little bit. So there's the one we had before. And now with the smaller light, you can see that much greater contrast. Even the shadow side is obviously a lot greater contrast as well. Right, we're gonna change it completely now. Okay, you can't get 
much harder light source than a bare bulb. The interesting thing is, it won't seem as hard as you might expect because other stuff is happening with the physics here, okay? Have a think about what's happening. Here's our light source, creating these lovely strong hard shadows, but the shadows aren't really jet black and the floor is illuminated over here because the light is also hitting the ceiling, hitting the walls, hitting over there. It's all bouncing around everywhere, which means that it won't actually be as high contrast as it could. So I can make Karis look really nice, or I can make her look really bad. And I'm pretty sure you don't want the really bad option, do you? But unfortunately, I have to show it for one shot, all right? Right, so here, here's the worst thing you could have done. Look at that shadow from the nose there. You see how that shadow's going up in the air, at an angle, not very nice at all. But we're gonna show you with our little special box how we can uh, change things and create a little bit more atmosphere and mood. There, right, keep it there. Refocus, take the shot again. Now, the lighting look has changed. This is where you can play around a little bit now. So you can actually, here we've made a little flap so we can open up a little bit of light. We'll change the look and feeling of the contrast just from the extra light. There you go. The extra light bouncing off of the studio ceiling changes it again. Let's open that slit of light a bit more. There, let's see if that works. Right, perfect. Right, so here we've got the hard light, but we've blocked most of the light from the studio. Now, if these guys move even closer to Karis and make that gap again, that shadow line will be even harder on Karis than it is now. Let's have a look at that exposure level. There we go, that's beautiful, really interesting. Now this is just a bare bulb light with a snoot on it, two pieces of card. We're gonna move on to um, a different lighting example. Now a lot of times we always think about using these soft boxes at a 45 degree angle but it's actually quite nice to use them horizontal. Here's the 3120. It's thin, 30 centimeters here, 120 that way. It's a really nice light for portraits in a horizontal position at a 45 degree angle when you set the light horizontally, but here we're using the actual front surface horizontally. Now, if I use it here, it's gonna look absolutely awful in that position because of all the directional light, the texture and everything else terrible way of using it there. And Karis doesn't want that, and neither do I. So, we're gonna use it for something else. We're gonna use it to light the hair and the shoulders. So we're gonna, notice there it clips the nose. It's highlighting the nose, because the nose um, obviously is more forwards on the face. So we move it backwards. At some point, the nose won't be it anymore, but just the hair will be. So you can see at that point, just the hair and shoulders. Now none of the face is in the exposure. Let's take a look at it. We'll have to guess the exposure. There it is, there's the hair light. We can bring it into a relatively flattering position here. Lock that focus. Let's take that shot again, let's just check that. Right, there it is, that's good, lovely. Right, turn the hair light one off a moment please and then press the test button. Just to show how much difference that extra hair light makes to the mood of the shot. So we take that off. Now what will happen is the background is going to be somewhat darker, as you can see there. Considerably darker. The exposure on the face remains much the same. The catch lights are all good, but you can see there's the difference with the hair light and the spread of that hair light onto the floor and the background behind. So you can now say to yourself, once you've checked and controlled the light separately, you can now say to yourself, right, I'm gonna play around with the level of that. We're gonna half the amount of light that we've got there so oh, it keeps moving focus. We're gonna take a stop off. So this is the, this would be a stop darker. There you go on the hair light. Now that actually looks really nice now. Without it, it's just like that. There's nothing at all. Just a little bit of bounce back of reflection off the front of the soft box. Here, we got a little bit more control and it was like that before and the amount of spill onto the floor. Here, it gains a little bit of mood, a little bit of atmosphere, but we've still got a little bit of something from that hair light. But the interesting thing is how much 
extra three-dimensionality just that simple hair light brings to the shop. That's when it's not lighting carrots anymore. Well, I hope you're enjoying this video. We've got some more great lighting tips and techniques coming up in this YouTube video. But if you'd like to get access to hundreds and hundreds of advanced lighting techniques, then why don't you check out visualeducation.com. It's the world's leading visual arts education platform. The video you're watching right now is just highlights from one of our many live shows. And during our live shows, our students can ask questions and interact so that they can further enhance their knowledge of lighting. Join us at visualeducation.com. Lovely, elegant, easy, simple, two light, elegant uh, portrait. But it's that hair light that makes all the difference. If you haven't got an Octobox, what else can you do? You can just use a standard reflector if you've got a low ceiling studio. See that huge light on the ceiling? It's coming from a standard reflector. It's going up and hitting a white ceiling. This is why it's really important to have your studio as a white ceiling. The same old argument comes up time and time again about going in there with a the light meter and going, ooh, look how cool I am, right? Forget all that nonsense. Look at it. Look at the result. Make a decision based on what you see. Here we go. Right, so this is light off the ceiling in a huge pool of light off the ceiling. Big, soft light. And Amber's now going to make a hard light. See, that's now a hard light because from Karis's point of view, that's now a small light source, but it's still going to be bouncing quite a lot around the studio. But let's have a look at the difference in the light look on Karis compared to what it was. We go here, take the shot. The exposure is probably gonna be quite a bit different. Oh, actually, no, it's fairly similar. But look at the shadows. The shadows are now sharp. Look at them there compared to the previous shot. So from that one, look at the shadows, how soft they are under the nose. You can barely tell the edge of the shadow at all there and under there. And the new one, now you can see the shadow sharpness here. Exposure has remained fairly similar, but the sharpness and hardness, even the shadow on the floor, of course, look at shad the shadow of Karis on the floor in the new one and the old one. It's barely visible, the shadow. There it's visible. Right, so here's a new ceiling. And now this ceiling is really close to Karis. And if we use this technique as we did before, we can get that light bouncing off our new ceiling Pull that up there, see, look, there's the light hitting Karis. There, it's gone with the barn doors. In. Let's have a look here. Right, so there we go. We've got halfway between now. It's not as strong a contrast and drama as we had when our soft boxes were really close, but it is a solution even if you don't have soft boxes. Now, we can make that light really hard by making this smaller. So if we take this up really tight here, we make a small light on the ceiling, which will create harder, sharper shadows. See, it's already see it's a harder light source. Let's go in here, take a shot again. So now you can see with the smaller light, we've got a harder light source, slightly stronger shadow, but it's nowhere near as flattering as our first shot. Let's do a comparison on these two. So there's the difference on the two. And if we zoom in on the, set on the two at the same time, you look at the difference in the contrast on the light on the face. See the one on the right, much higher contrast because one is a small patch of light on the ceiling and the other one is a large patch of light on the ceiling. But then if we go to the ones before that, of course, then we had a much more drama um, with a medium to small softbox being significantly closer to our subject. Um, and then we try to replicate that by doing it this way with a lower ceiling with light bouncing off the ceiling. But as you can see, we just can't get the same level of control because more light is bouncing around the studio from that ceiling then is controlled when we do it via the softbox method like so. Right, one final lighting setup to do. I wanna create the softest light possible 
with just two lights. There's one light behind the photographer facing away and one light behind the model facing away. And then you really can't get any softer. Remember, we're just dealing with two bare bulb lights here and a little white box. Yeah, turn the background light off altogether. This is just interesting now because at the moment now, we just got one light, this light behind me, but this light behind me might be enough to light the entire box space that we're in. It is. So we didn't even need the background light. But what we do need here is even though we've created the softest, most omnidirectional light, we want to see if we can bring a little bit of contrast into it, okay? We might have to adjust the exposure to suit, but let's take a look at the side of those cheeks now. There. Okay, so now you can see that contouring has come down onto the side of the face. If I jump back to the previous shot, that's what we had before. And now we got a little bit of contouring onto the side of the face, just from those blacks coming in, but we're still just using one bare bulb light. So you're gonna go to this side and you're gonna do that. Remember, this is one light, guys, just one bare bulb light. So I'm gonna take that focus, shoot. Let's look at the contrast this time. And there you can see now the contrast is just on one side. You can see you can be creative even with one or two lights. So don't let it put you off. Don't let a small space put you off. Just think outside the box a little bit. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.